Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things, the stranger things, interesting things, at least we find them interesting, going on in the world of Linux and open source. I am mm-hmm. Vin Stone, Yay. joined every week by <laughs> Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus and everybody at home. Hello. You lot watching us live. How are you doing? Is it another great week for Linux? Yes, it is, actually. There is I don't think we've had a, a, a week that hasn't been great for Linux. <laughs> are, are you yeah, sure? ever. Uh, we had some fairly small shows here and there, but yeah, no, they, they were all pretty good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what's everyone been up to, man? I got the, um, Pedro, I hope you'll um, be very excited to know. I got a new VGA adapter. <gasps> Ooh. Yeah, the, the monitor cables. <laughs> See? Oh, yes. Look, it's Component. a D-sub 15 pen. <laughs> yeah. As far as I'm concerned, that's VGA. To, to, to throw you back, um, if you watch the uh, Saturday show, I think it might have been in the pre-show, we, we were talking about, um, I'm trying to track down this uh, hipster sound card, and it's an uh, HDSP 9632. They've been making them for like 16 mm. years. And I... These cables, these are the breakout cables. Now, the thing is, with this PCI card, you can buy one brand new. They still make them. These cables, little as makes no difference, $100 new. And they still make these new. And I found these on eBay for 25 bucks. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is, this is one of those things like, if I find one, worst case scenario, I have them. But uh, yeah, the D-sub connector, um, I think, a, who was it? Aldi has posted a link to it. And mm-hmm. Pedro's like, yes, it's it's got a monitor. But I'm like, Pedro, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just thought that was fun because, yes, I could see that if you were just looking at the image, it looks like, you know, from a side view. And I was like, why is it what's that? And like a PCI card with like two VGAs out. The, yeah. There's no, the other one is only eight pin. From a side view, Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, if you weren't counting the pens, yes. Yeah. So, uh, I just thought that was fun. Also, uh, later this week, I will have out uh, something I want everyone to start using if you stream. I'm show you just how simple it is to um, set up what we have right now. If you watch this live on Twitch for this show and basically stream I do, we have live closed captioning. You know, if you're in a situation to where you can have the volume up or if you're hearing impaired. And, it does a good enough job where if you utilize proper context mm. clues, you have some idea what's going on. So it's relatively easy. Yes, yeah, so you have to remember what you read. <laughs> and um, on top of that, it provides, uh, A, it's better than nothing. B, sometimes unintentionally hilarious. What about you, Joel? Have you done anything unintentionally hilarious? <laughs> uh, not so much this week. <laughs> <laughs> That was a loaded statement if I ever heard one. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to think. <laughs> I've just been doing lots of Linux podcasting work and social networking and, and loving it. <laughs> can yeah. you can you do like anti-social networking? How would that even work? Have you seen uh, my Twitter? No. Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna <laughs> I'm being say honest, that. I have and I don't think I've ever looked at what you've posted Case in on point. <laughs> it's working. <laughs> Uh, you got new toys, Pedro. I do. Well, uh, technically, I already had the Raspberry Pi that's currently driving what's on screen here, which is the result of the GL Mark II uh, run that I did, which is it scored a 38. And uh, now I have found renewed um, splendor and awe for my Pinebook Pro. <laughs> so for the audio listeners, he's holding up what appears to be a square. Yes, it is uh, <laughs> very much square. It is a uh, the screen is its drive uh, is being driven from the GPIO pins, and it's seven hundred and twenty by seven hundred and twenty. It's a Hyperpixel four, uh, the square version, the non-touch version, because the touch version is sold out everywhere, and when it is available, is massively expensive. And this one was uh, like thirty something pounds on eBay, so I got that and. Uh, Another dude was uh, selling the 3D printed case specifically for the Raspberry Pi 3A Plus with these square screens. Of course, this one is not the touch version, so the case has some gaps 
<laughs> I was telling you but, in the pre-show, man, just get some ramen. You can fill that in. <laughs> no, I do intend yeah. to get the touch screen at some point. But uh, yeah, for now, that will work. That and works. That's a very nice screen for pies because it supports anything from the uh, Raspberry Pi Zero all the way up to the Raspberry Pi 4. So that's neat. <laughs> that's great. And you're going to be using it as like the media center for the house. Yep. So, all right. It's going to have the display is just going to show whatever music happens to be playing or if nori wants radio station shows the name of the radio station i'm just looking for proper software to do everything that i wanted to do uh probably going to have to integrate that script that uh the atomic but uh, <laughs> uh, shared um on uh, on our discord earlier in the week because he has like custom script that pulls down um youtube videos just makes heavy use of YouTube DL, so that will probably be integrated as well. You think you can get like a um, receiver so you can get like the soothing sounds of like Radio 2? Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You can Good get work. an FM receiver. <sighs> AM if you're lucky. <laughs> it's the UK. It's mostly yeah. FM. FM. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. So before we jump directly into things, uh, I put out a little video yesterday after like six months of waiting because I typically don't do stuff like this. But you might know, six seven months ago, I bought um, a quad U um, 4K UHD 2160 capture card from Blackmagic, and um, I went through the ringer with this lot, man. You know, trying to get it to work with our little baby Threadripper first gen 1920X, and it never did, man. <laughs> You know, I was giving them the benefit of the doubt on this. Uh, you know, there's my little story. You can go to our web zone and take a look. I was just talking about, hey, man, I bought this and rounds of tech support back and forth. Blackmagic said, you know what? Maybe the card's defective. And I said, maybe it is because, hey, I wouldn't be the first person to say if you're buying a Blackmagic product, buy two of them. Um, then they returned it you know, like a month later. Clean bill of health, nothing was wrong with it. And like a month after that, somebody from uh, Black Magic Development sent me an email. You know, this has been four months and went by, and they're like, hey, we, we uh, plugged it, actually tested it on a Threadripper system for once. And yeah, there's an issue. So that was six months ago. We've not heard anything else. And the reason I'm putting this video out there is there's no mention anywhere. On the Black Magic Check website, they know there's a problem with this card with Red Ripper. It's not in the PCI recommendation documentation. It's not in the web zone. And they're not terribly worried about it because you can't buy stuff directly from Black Magic. You have to buy it through one of their authorized resellers. And it's almost a little bit of a racket depending on who you buy from. You know, if you get through Amazon, you can send it back for everything. I just bought it directly from a reseller who has a policy, which I think is a logical policy link, unless the hardware that you buy is defective or broken, you're not getting a refund, which I get, right? And uh, so I'm kind of stuck with the card, and I don't want anybody else to be stuck with the card. And one of the first comments on the YouTube video was somebody else said, yeah, I had that exact same problem, but Blackmagic told me we didn't even know about it, which they clearly did. <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> there was also another person that uh, said that they would totally buy it off you if they could afford it <laughs> so there's your pro tip i was a little, little little bit sad about that and i just wanted to wait until absolutely sure are you going to do the right thing black magic maybe update it to make it work and a I'm like oh, well at least are you going to notify anyone that there's an issue I'm like when uh, not really we got your money um <laughs> So yeah, made me said. Also, I want I want everyone to rate my clickbait thumbnail. I tried really hard on that. I put a warning sign with a lightning bolt in it. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, so use the right colors. Uh, it's just that the background should have been yellow. And since it's I was the thinking two of those, blue. I was thinking blue. Blue could also work, but if you use yellow and then put a big like uh, prohibited sign over both the. Um, Ryzen box and the uh, the card picture mm -hmm. with a little plus sign in between them to show it's like no these two don't work together it's like flashy yellow background make possibly <laughs> some googly eyes on the uh, thread <laughs> yes 
So uh, <laughs> it's already served its purpose. I've did some blind searches on Google for like, hey, Threadripper and the um, HDMI quad, and it's already showing up in the search results, which is what I want somebody thinking about buying the system and having the insight of like, hey, let's check compatibility. They'll at least um, Neo Dodge Bullet on that one. So yeah. I, I did that. That's not necessarily Linux related, but it's something we're using in the studio. Well, it's at a box in the studio, and I don't want anybody to run afoul. Pedro, <laughs> KDE Plasma is out, and uh, you're going to tell us all about it as you do. I am, actually. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, no, uh, the first bit is actually fairly positive. Uh, OMG Ubuntu put out an article uh, with the plans, the KDE roadmap for 2021, and they say uh, it will have um, the new fingerprint, uh, like the fingerprint reader. So if you have a laptop with one of them, you can actually use that right out of the box. Um, on KDE natively without having to use either uh, the fingerprint GUI that's completely separate from it or the uh, <laughs> CLI. But yeah, the that's something that GNOME has had since at least 2018. It's probably earlier than that, but 2018 was mm -hmm. when I learned about it. So yeah, only took you what? Coming in on three years to catch up on that one, KDE. The... Um, the other thing is the version 5.20.5. Yep, that's the current one that's out. They fixed uh, an issue with Blue Devil that ca caused uh, Bluetooth devices that weren't paired to show up in the known devices list. But that's been fixed now, uh, so that, that's good. Um, they also reverted a very slight screw-up that they had with the uh, panel positioning. If you had the panel on the left or on the top of the screen, you couldn't resize it. That's They basically <laughs> they introduced a fix uh, on version 20.4 that had to be reverted so that that would work again properly. And... Um, what I would like for them to fix, which they still haven't, is the very occasional, admittedly, um, memory leak in KWIN X11. Because sometimes I'll walk away and then I'll come back and everything's frozen. And my first instinct used to be, oh, it's the Ryzen thing. But then I remembered, no, I disabled C6. I set the power supply to not go idle. What's going on? Uh, drop into a TTY, open HTOP. Oh, KWIN X11 is using 15 gigabytes of RAM. Can we fix that? Yeah, Please. you can. Get 32. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Aww. I just, yeah, at this point, I'm just doing it to myself. I realized this, but... <laughs> Uh, well, I actually love the new Milky Way wallpaper for KDE Plasma 5.21 that that's going to be in that release. And um, it's it's a darker theme, which is really nice because all the previous wallpapers, official ones have been very bright and cheery, but I like love those too. But this is good, nice on your eyes. And you can download it now. You, need to, you don't have to wait for KDE Plasma 5.12 to use it. <laughs> I was kind of shocked because, you know, I'm using that bleeding edge um, hotness that is Debian testing right now on the uh, streaming box. And they finally got all the uh, XFC 416 stuff rolled out, including the panel. Finally, the earthquake detection plugin is not holding it back. Um, the dark theme on that actually works. Good on you, Lon. And mm -hmm. I was thinking everything was changing to dark theme. One advantage with evolution, dark themes actually work with it, Pedro. Uh, admittedly, uh, I have a custom theme in Thunderbird that <laughs> makes it dark. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just called uh, dark or deep dark, something like deep that. <laughs> so Linus is kind of back to being Linus, which, you know, for good or for ill, uh, it's entertaining one way or the other. And uh, this, he kind of went off on the availability of ECC, because you got to think about it. Back in the day, ECC RAM is pretty much mainstream and so much that you just go and buy it. But, you know, Intel being Intel's kind of phased it out, kind of. They absolutely have it outside of non-Xeon platforms. And, uh, you know, Google did a paper back in like 2009. It was really straightforward. Even Google was like, yo, we've ran across error rates that were pretty high using non-ECC memory and, um, you know, AMD support even today, like on the Threadripper. It's unofficial, but it's there. 
and um, Intel still limited to Xeon. And Linus is not terribly happy with that. And he's like, Intel, look what you've done. People who need ECC, it's gotten expensive and hard to find. And, you know, I'm never going to say, you know, I'm just not going to say I've never had bad memory, but something, I don't know, man. I, no, I honestly have never, never had an issue with it. But I, I saw a post from a guy who has thousands of servers set up in clusters. And he's like, it's pretty fun when you get a report and you're like, oh, Sunspot. Because you start getting <laughs> hundreds of them. He's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly what that was. But tracking everything down, I, I think he made a good use case for like just not limiting that. I mean, there's some arguments to be made like on the desktop, you know, ECC on the desktop makes sense if you're going to be overclocking, strangely enough, because it's going to tell you when you're really towards that limit. It's going to give you that feedback of like, whoa, okay, we're starting to get errors here. We can start dialing back. Now, personally, I had no interest in, I didn't even think about it for the third ripper system in here. And, you know, and it's really only a desktop if you squint. But, <laughs> but you know with yeah. the whole ryzen situation uh with amd making memory speed actually important again because intel if you had a 1600 uh, ddr3 or a 2400 ddr4 stick you were good you don't really need more than that but with amd people found that oh if i overclock my ram then the infinity fabric goes faster infinity fabric goes faster does different ccx to talk to each other faster that's just better performance all around and i for one would love to get my hands on some 3866 uh, ecc memory mm -hmm. it doesn't exist and i'm pretty sure if it did it would be stupidly expensive and so yeah i'm very much with linus on this one i want to fiddle some more with my memory but i'm using whatever samsung b die uh that uh what was it corsair the vengeance uh ltx mm. modules whatever they use uh, yeah it's um that's what we're stuck with well <laughs> yes I, as someone who um worships up the altar of the corsair yellow sticky ram like yeah you just yeah. work right good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> pretty much yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have that Corsair Vengeance RAM too in my AMD rig. So, but Linus is right. And, you know, there is a reason why error correcting code memory is used in servers and workstations. I have plenty of them here for rendering for my work and uh, doing animation. Um, you know, it's used primarily for stability, mission critical applications, and where data corruption can't be tolerated. But I would like that in my uh, classic desktop too, as well. And it, it, it should just be standard. Um, there's no reason uh, for it not to be other than it is a little bit slower because it, it does have to do those calculations for the error correcting. So sometimes the RAM is a little slower, but so much more stable. Yeah, <laughs> latency, yeah, that's because, inevitable. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I, just like this return, and it's like, if you don't believe me, then just look at multiple generations of Rohammer where each time Intel and memory manufacturers bleated about how it's going to be fixed next time, narrator. No, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I did like the, uh, his line about uh, the- He dropped uh, on the heads. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I absolutely guarantee they happened. The modern DRAM is so reliable that it doesn't need ECC was always a bedtime story for children that had been dropped on their heads a bit too yes. many times. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Linus. That was awesome. But that was the best quote. <laughs> he does genuinely raise a good point of, you know, Intel with the market domination. It's like, ah, eh, DRAM's getting, you know, let's be honest, I'm not going to defend Intel, but for the average use, use case, I mean, non-ECC RAM is going to be fine, but they have just killed the market for it because most people are not going to be buying Xeons, let's face it. Mm -hmm. It's only like the older secondhand ones that are pretty cheap because you need a very expensive motherboard to run them. Mm. <laughs> well, yeah. is there anything in Kernel 511 that's uh, worth playing around with? Ooh, there this is cool. A few things. <laughs> uh, there was the big um, news, which was uh, as it comes from the register, uh, Linux 5.11 dominated by descriptors for new AMD silicon. So yeah, you get a lot of the uh, new AMD descriptors it's not you know full support yet but the van gogh architecture is uh 
very well on the way to getting proper Linux support, which is very nice to see. Uh, I mean, if AMD can't do it properly, they might as well just provide whatever they can and let the community do it for them, which is what they've been doing lately. And it's been working, so good job. Uh, the, um, I'm never the other listening thing- to you again, Pedro. You've said the <laughs> negative thing about AMD. You <laughs> NVIDIA shill. <laughs> Only <Aww>. AMD. <laughs> Man, I've been doing poorly this episode. All right, uh, I'll, I'll up my game a little bit. <laughs> okay. But yeah, the thing that I noticed was uh, they have improved support for the um, SD, um, like the new SD card revisions, the SD Express cards. And I would love, because I have an SD UC mm-hmm. UHS 3 card that, Effectively, I can't use at full speed because there's no laptop or tablet uh, that, that I have. Oh, you mean is SDUS Purple Monkey Dishwasher what? SDUC H- uh, UHS 3. It te- theoretically has a maximum speed of 683 megabytes per second. So it could rate about what, four? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, most laptops and most tablets and phones, they only have the SDXC connector. So they don't have the extra row of pins below them. And uh, that basically effectively limits this. uh, It's actually the uh, SD card that's on the uh, Pi Boy here. Uh, it, yeah, it effectively limits just how fast you can write and read from it. So that's the other thing. It's very nice that it is on the kernel now and they support the, I can't remember the, um, what's the newest revision? It's something crazy like, yep, PCIe Gen 4 by 1 and a maximum (laughs) write speed, theoretical, of, um, 39, 40 megabytes per second. All right. So that, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Maybe we'll live in that beautiful future. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrified of even like standard SD cards because all they do is somehow manage to end up under the stove in my kitchen. It doesn't <laughs> matter. I, I can be in the basement and drop it. I just might as well go ahead and pull the stove out because that's where it's at, man. Are they crispy then? <laughs> <laughs> they might be because that that's at this lost. point they're melted onto the floor <laughs> and at that point it's like you have a new owner now when this house is sold oh so yeah and as we mentioned uh you know um as we've mentioned here before that was in the works it includes support for the guitar hero controllers which i'm sure a lot of people are, will be happy about and for me this is exciting it's including support for the Ouya Game Council, which I have right here. In fact, I have Debbie in nice. mind. <laughs> and here's the controller that's not that great. <laughs> I ended up getting a third party one because this one is just not not a very good controller. <laughs> you know what? That's that's honestly probably more valuable than the regular one because I, I gotta yeah. assume precisely maybe one company accidentally made some Third party controllers for the OUYA. It was Android, so yeah. anything that technically yeah, anything supports that would... Android. Well, yeah. true, but it's gonna have all the buttons. <laughs> yeah, and that sometimes wasn't was an That's issue. You had to, nowadays. Yeah. Sometimes uh yeah. You would have to use uh, two controllers to get everything working right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the same buttons. Different yeah. uh different, you know, analog sticks, but it's got the same buttons. How dare you? How dare you accuse the Steam controller of conforming <laughs> as soon as I saw you reach over or something, it's like, that's a Steam controller. Yep. No, no. It was either, it was either that or like an early 2000s digital camera, but I thought that would be more relevant to the conversation. <laughs> that would, yeah. I mean, no, if we're talking for about an that. interesting oh, controller go. that one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good to see. Um, happy to see it. Yes. And I like that AMD stuff is getting dumped in there quicker and quicker and to have that beautiful synergistic life of just being able to plug a card in and go. I like that. Yeah. It's awesome. So, <laughs> uh, psst. yeah, no, that's, <laughs> that that's not what then. you think. That's not what you think. Pedro has not <laughs> sprung a leak. Nay. <laughs> Nor is it snake jazz kids. This is a fast and multi-platform <laughs> Spotify <laughs> client. With a native GUI, and I, I wonder there are, you know, love it or hate it, man. People use Spotify, and most of the clients I've come across, well, you guessed it, they're Electron. And yeah, no, this, this is 99.9% Rust. That other, man, I like that. It's like, 
Bed Bath and Beyond. <laughs> Stay out of the Beyond section. Don't don't question what the other is. And I was just looking at this and like this is kind of neat, man. It's in wicked early development, and they are all well, those guys looking for contributors. And it's kind of missing some stuff at the moment. I'm gonna be honest, like support for podcasting and well, there's a list down here. What's in it? Let's talk about the good things. Vorbis track playback, browsing saved album tracks, save unsafe albums, browsing follow playlist, and you can search for artist albums and tracks. And there's still a gang of stuff that needs to be implemented. But hey, it's Rust. I downloaded it on Debian tested. It's like, let's build some cargo. Boom, and it died in a fire, didn't build. So that's as far as I got oh. with it, to be honest. Um, I do, the only time I tangle with Spotify is on Android because that's just if I'm listening to anything. It's I've I don't do desktop listening anymore. So mm. there's that. But this is a project, and I want to yeah. give projects anything that's not Electron that fights against Flash 2.0. Um, <laughs> well, so, yeah. it's just nice to have other Spotify apps on Linux other than the official one. And uh, um, what's really cool is that psst, uses <laughs> LibraSpot <laughs> at its core. And LibraSpot is the open source Spotify client library for Rust. So that explains the Rust integration. <laughs> and for those of you actually out there who prefer a Spotify player that consumes even less memory, there are two new Spotify apps that run in CLI that are also written in Rust. Um, and CSpot and Spotify TUI. And what's run. really, yes, yeah, C Spot Run. <laughs> but well, what's really cool um, is I really enjoyed using Spotify uh, TUI because it even has a, a CLI graphic equalizer for us nerds. So I thought that was really cool. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, no, if you really must have an open source client for your proprietary uh, media platform. Uh, although there is one thing that I will give this um, if it blocks ads. I did this like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's if it gets rid of point, the Spotify yes. <laughs> ads, I yeah, I need it like yesterday, please. <laughs> Listen, Pedro, all I need you to do is visit my website to come gamble. <laughs> uh, the, whenever Nori uh, plays Spotify out of the uh, the sound bar, it's like every it's like every two songs or every three songs, mm -hmm. some stupid. At, <laughs> do people actually fall for that? Is that yeah. effective advertising or is it just annoying? <laughs> well, you're talking about it. <laughs> eh, fair. No, fair. <laughs> I'm yeah. not talking about any of the products advertised. I'm just saying it's annoying. <laughs> Dude, it's got that advertising, it's got that much of a reach where you're not even paying attention, but you know it's there. Mm hmm. Nori, on the other hand, <laughs> probably has not paid attention, but if you ask her about the ads, she's like, oh, yeah, this ad and this ad, I hate those, but you know them. <laughs> probably uh, insidious is what I, it is. I, I can say that like one of the reasons, uh, like when Hulu was first rolling out, man, there was this Raisin Bran ad because I was trying to watch like Battlestar Galactica or something like that. And every 15, it was the same Raisin Bran ad and there was no skipping. There was nothing I hated. I loathed that ad by the time I got done watching. That's my story. Oh so, boy. <laughs> I use Google Photos because I'm a Google shill and I hate open source or something like that. I just use it because it's there and it syncs to all the devices <laughs> out of the box. Um, some people want that exact same functionality or something close to it, but they want to be able to roll their own. Okay, so this is, uh, we skipped one, Vin. Um, <laughs> this is... <laughs> there, there's wicked, wicked, yeah. jungle is massive. But let's talk about wicked, Libra Photos while, while we're on it. <laughs> so this is uh, Libra Photos. It has all the convenience of Google Photos without sacrificing your privacy. And it even has AI for face recognition. It can generate albums and has object detection in photos, just like Google Photos. And um, I see this as actually a great way to back up all your photos and videos that stored are that are stored in the Google Cloud. So and um, it's just it's like really nice to have. It looks nice. Yes. Yeah, it's actually the interface is beautiful, and you can you know s sort by name and date like you do with Google Photos. And it's it looks beautiful, and you can actually um, use the demo if you sign up. There's a little demo that you can test it. 
And uh, you know what the really awesome thing about this is? They have screenshots <laughs> in the GitHub. Oh. Yeah. Finally. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> You're so right. That's nonsense. I, I, de de destroying the mystery of what the program is, Pedro. <laughs> this is a time it's honored tradition. <laughs> In open it's source. Schrodinger's <laughs> UX design. You have to build it first before you can see. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. Maybe you want to go check it out. Um, all this is going to be in our show notes on LinuxGameCast.com. Now, after um, these two have had mild aneurysms for something being mildly out of order, we will continue. <laughs> mildly. <laughs> yeah, so let's do Wicked. <laughs> So, so what's this funny named app you, we're we're calling Wicket? So cool! This is a uh, this is a way you can get Wikipedia summaries from the command line with this awesome little app called Wicket without touching a web browser, and it's an npm install, so it's really easy to install. And you can do, for example, Wicket space Star Trek. And it will come up with the Wikipedia description for Star Trek. And uh, I was even thinking you it could do... It would be a bit disappointing if it didn't. <laughs> yes, it would be. <laughs> so, so, but I thought this was funny. How about using Wicket to search for Wicket the Ewok from Star Wars? That makes sense. So it's Wicket, Wicket. <laughs> Wicket Jungle is massive. Yes. Yeah, no, the, I put this in the show notes because I saw yeah. someone post about it. I think it was on Twitter. And it's like, oh, it's called Wicked. And immediately, Ali G just popped into my head. It's like, Wick, Wicked. Jungle Wicked is good. massive. <laughs> so, booyaka, booyaka. I could definitely see, like, you know, Wicked, Wicked, Wild, Wild West or something. Man, but yes. <laughs> wicked, Wild. I think this is going to fall under one of those. That's neat. I'll never use it, but it's still neat. Um, oh, I've I've been using it a lot since I installed it. <laughs> I mean, and I like it's it's that, cool because Jill, you can that do does like, sound like a personal problem. But, oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, with like wiki, like we even have a wiki bot in our Discord. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's more of like the ultimate well actually tool because you're doing something in the terminal, someone says something, and you immediately go wicked the thing. Yes. <laughs> actually, I, ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> it could be a well actually tool. I like, um, I use the. <laughs> wiki bot in discord when somebody says i'm like i don't know what that is what is this <laughs> yeah, yeah bang wiki <laughs> thing <laughs> either that or i'll wait no well, no wait i'll say something unintentionally misspelled comically then i'll do the wiki on that just to, <laughs> just to see yeah so, <laughs> you just see it's part curiosity part because i like to do a little counter time down until i see the edited on the original like whatever misspelling was I'm like all right it didn't take too long okay <laughs> Yeah, so Wicked is cool, and there's lots of different, you know, syntaxes you can use for it in the command line. And one is if you you say you want to search for uh, Wicked Linux, and then you can do a tac tac link, and that will print a link to the whole article after the Linux query. So it has a lot of cool options, and so I've been taking you, advantage you of it. Do you think we get a GUI front end to it? Maybe like use uh, like Electron? Why? <laughs> <laughs> Is it my turn to say it? That's the joke. Yeah. <laughs> ben, uh, why do I want to use electron in the terminal? Well, the terminal's written in Rust, so you might as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I ran across this, and me being me, simply... I, I slammed immediately into, I know I can get up to something malicious with this, Jill. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just can't definitely. just seem to figure out what. Yeah, so this is really cool. This is TabFS, and it's a browser extension that mounts your browser tabs as a file system on your computer. And it's cool because it maps each of your tabs to a folder. So now you can browse all the files in a folder and use your existing tools to manipulate them, whether you're in command line or on the GUI, such as listing the titles of all the tabs you have open in command line using the cat command or being able to save text of all your tabs in one file, which 
I thought that was really cool. And it's a great way to organize many or websites in one category in one place. Dude knows. And it is yep. so cool. <laughs> and I would actually, I could use this for our LWW show notes to compile all our web pages and the text from them in one place. So that's good for me. So and actually, I am very slowly do this. and ineff inefficiently <laughs> backing up the whole internet. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's great. It's great for that. And, you know, being to batch save files and scripts and images for later retrieval from web pages. And actually being is, able is, to is use, which is handy. what they say, being able to use <laughs> your own uh, operating systems tools to interface yeah. what are effectively files that have whatever you happen to be looking at for my use case yes. i don't i don't <laughs> see it because uh, <laughs> i use control w to close tab and if i want to get something off of that particular web page i do control u and then i go to the source grab the thing and then control w that too <laughs> so yeah that, that that's me so like, pedro has to be contrary <laughs> <laughs> microsoft internet explorer Chrome, <laughs> firefox i have this great great idea and it's going to allow you to save a location that you've previously been in a website and store it without anything fancy. You don't even have to keep a tab open. I'm going to call it, I think, bookmarks. Bookmarks is a good ring to it. Yeah, but it's not the, <laughs> not the same. They're just links. So it's just annoying. It, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's more efficient. doesn't require all the extra stops. It just gets you right there. doesn't it save you a little bit of this space. space. Well, yeah. but... What happens? <laughs> <laughs> what happens when that web page is no longer available? Then you go. If to you use TabFS, the then you'd have a backup of it. Wayback machine. <laughs> but not everything Google is cache. in the Wayback mm -hmm. machine. <laughs> and yes, Google Cache is a thing. <laughs> See, and yeah, if we get to the too. point, <laughs> if we get to the point there, oh, I actually need this because the internet might go away. We, as a society, have bigger problems on our this, hands. This is this is what I boil down to. This is what I boil down. UGA law, same reason. Quit making kids go into the law school libraries to look things up when they do it online. I'm like, oh is, yeah. If, if the internet goes away, law and order. Ah. <laughs> there isn't any. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's basically my gun's got more bullets yeah. than yours. Sorry. <laughs> Mir is right in chat. He says, but things can be removed from Google Cache too. You are absolutely right, Mir. Things can Thank be removed you. from your hard drive as well. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. This is true. But, um, but it's if okay. You're... You can ask the NSA to have a backup. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> but if you make regular backups, you'd have it back up. Backed up. <laughs> so... And I don't know. I mean, I, I just, I love, I love the thought process, kids. I do. Um, yeah, it's really cool. <laughs> if you like what we do, you want to support independent media, uh, there's an easy way to do that. That's patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We want to thank each and every one of you who make this show possible. And that's how we do it. It pays for hosting, pays for all the equipment, all the fun stuff that we get to bring to you each and every week. I'm going to get your name in the credits. If you mm -hmm. like what we do and you want like the long form version, of this show, you're leaving a lot on the table because the live and uncut podcast is typically two hours of this and you get all the pre-show content, post-show content, and that goes for Linux Gamecast weekly as well. And I throw a couple of things up there, you know, like an early, early look, you know, if you like, um, want to come kick the tires before I release it to the masses, cause I don't like putting anything behind our mm -hmm. paywall and you can take a look at some videos and stuff that I work on and you get access to our discord where that is our Slack. There is no, Pedro, you, you'll be the first to confirm <laughs> this. That's where we talk in general. There's no like side room. Yeah. It's like, yo, so if you want to pretty see much. that conversation. Everything's then, in general, pretty much. <laughs> except when we're live. When we're live, <laughs> yeah, we're live because we have IRC as always, completely free, mm -hmm. completely open. And uh, that's the thing, get access. And Twitch. To an audio only stream for this show and Saturday night for Linux Gamecast Weekly through Discord if that is your jam. But yeah, Happy New Year, everyone. Let's uh, make 2021 a little bit better and yes. hopefully, hopefully, just like cut, cut, cut it back to like 10 on, on just the craziness, <laughs> right? No, it's only just begun. Mm. Yeah. The eternal optimist, Pedro Mateus. Let's get in <laughs> to a slice of pie. May um, I interest you in a slice of pie? Mm. Tell me, Pedro. Tell me. Well, about that him. pie is well lit up. <laughs> uh, and 
yeah, this uh, this is a little project comes from Hackaday, and it's about uh, using Raspberry Pi to control tally lights, L- little indicators of which camera is currently being used to stream or record, whatever the case may be. The very few times that I worked with like proper uh, multiple c- proper camera setup, they had teeny tiny uh, little red LEDs. Uh, those were the tele lights. I guess, yeah, this makes it so you don't actually have to squint to figure out which of the cameras is uh, the one yeah. <laughs> active at this point. So that that's very good. Um, it, it's all HTTP. You can, um, there's a, links in the article and the link for the article will be in the show notes it's all done over http so with a little bit of googling i was going to say web development knowledge but no one knows http anymore you just google it and you could probably integrate this with stuff like obs websockets uh to do everything directly from the one button you click on one button to change the camera and the tally light goes up through the pie and it changes to that camera and lit up. Ooh. I was reading into him. He's already made a uh, OBS web socket. So. There we go. Nice. <laughs> so you're thinking about how this is going to roll out. What do you, um, Pedro, you're, you're on the right scent. This makes perfect uh, sense if you're doing a multi camera live shoot because we've yeah. all, all seen the like multi camera shot that somebody's recorded and they weren't on the right camera and they're just talking actively. <laughs> That's, uh, and yeah. then they realize wait a second, the LED's gone off. Oh, <laughs> but that lack of LED, you know, you don't know which camera you're supposed to be talking into and facing. And, you know, sometimes you just roll with it. But, you know, for like production stuff, tally lights are kind of a thing of the past because it, it's you just do a multi camera shot now. You know, you set up three or four cameras mm-hmm. and you roll because mm-hmm. even basic, more, ba- well, yeah, basic non linear video editors. I, don't know if Katie and Lives get that in it. I know, um, like your premieres, your uh, Black Magic, uh, Defense Yourself, integrated. stuff like that. You're going to have, um, it's very easy to sync and edit multicam nowadays. So the approach is just throw cameras at the problem, then you can direct mm-hmm. it later. But <laughs> something like this, this could be fun, especially if you do it incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just record it. Record yourself breaking things and doing it wrong. And oh no, 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 no! I'm just thinking about torturing the talent and having them constantly <laughs> look into the wrong. Oh camera. my gosh! <laughs> I'm a yeah. monster, Pedro. Have you not put this together? <laughs> just deliberately wire the wrong telly light up. Absolutely. <laughs> So if you would um, be interested in wa- incorrectly wiring tally lights and want to tell us about your tally adventures. You can uh, give us a tally of your progress all the way through it uh, by going to the contact form on linuxgamecast.com. It's cleverly hidden behind the contact button, and it asks for your name, your email, a subject, and whichever message you'd like to share with us. Just make sure you pick uh, LWDW, otherwise, well, it may be misinterpreted as some hate mail. I did update it. I I added a brand new feature to our contact page, Pedro. (gasps) There is? Mm. What's it say? Can't tell you. I haven't it's checked. A secret. <laughs> <laughs> no one can ever find out. Um, I put an other category in there because I oh, got a message. Was like, I just sense. wanted to send a thing talking. Like, yeah, just select other. If it's not, you know, if it's just like general, like if you're working on a project, like, hey man, I'll come on the show and talk about it. Select other if you want, and if you're not sure where it would fit. Very good. <laughs> oh, very nice. Um, better yet, uh, send me a DM that I'll never read on Twitter. <laughs> Actually, I might read your DM on Twitter. <laughs> That's probably one of the good places to reach me at. <laughs> if you're trying to get hold of the show, I'll tell you what Twitter does. And this is not me going, oh, I'm too good for that. No, if I don't follow you on Twitter, you have like your regular DMs from the people I follow and the people who follow me. There's like this. Um, Nope, escape <laughs> that is you don't even see, man. Of people who've sent you, like, you have to approve, like, to even see anything from them. Like, Twitter's like, Yeah, you just can't mm. do I understand what Twitter does. That, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'll chances are I'll never see it. Maybe once every two years, I'll say, Oh, yeah, that thing's there. Whoa, boy. <laughs> so, <laughs> heads up on that. But you might have remembered, um, we had, um, Yoel Joel. Come on the show two, two weeks ago 
And he's like, yo, let, let, me, t- let me tell you what's going on with um, CentOS streams. Try to clear some things up. Still need and to clear some things a little up. bit. <laughs> <laughs> First off, CentOS stream made by Martians. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> so Joel writes, man, he's like, a couple of clarifications, rough humbled versions and dates. Give me a break. I was only half. It was like six o'clock in the morning in New Zealand. All right. Mm-hmm. Come on. I use that <laughs> same excuse. It doesn't matter because people are really bad at time conversion. I'm like, oh, it was six o'clock in the morning. Um, Real 8 release uh, was May 2019, not 2018. I use this as a start of the spot, but you know, life cycle comments were correct. And there's band dates and times. That's all. Mm-hmm. Application streams currently don't ship the kernels when currently mm-hmm. the, they do don't not ship, ship the kernels uh, as an app stream yeah, as an app stream <laughs> there's no no reason it couldn't leverage it just currently no reason in mm. the eight release postgres versions in the current rel 8 app stream are not points okay there's a bunch of version numbers okay yeah sure cur and happy new year that's Aww, I, I mean Joel. if those were your only fumbles very good Oh, yeah, you did a great I'd. job. <laughs> <laughs> I'll definitely give that a 9.8 out of 13. Um, yes. <laughs> no, it's good. Thank you for taking the time, A, to um, talk to us about it, and B, come back and like, yo, clarifications. It's always good to get uh, to like cut down some well actually. It's- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that was actually a very nice interview. Um, it's very interesting, like the amount of fud that the uh, internet was spreading about that whole thing and I, although you know i'll give the fud um mongers a uh, a bit of credit that <laughs> that joke website that was hilarious mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was very good Actually. that was very good <laughs> I, I'm just saying, man. I mean, if, if it's funny and it comes across as parody, that's fine. That's a different thing than running around. I'm screaming. But then again, welcome to the internet where people who don't know what they're talking about are often the loudest. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, beautiful people. We got to get out of here. Roll some credits. Have a fantastic week. <laughs> Yay. That's me. <laughs> that's me. No, Pedro, that's your name in a video. And that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, our executive producers. It's kind of like Beautiful. video subject. That's your name in a video. In a video. Day. Oh, yes. didn't quite get there. And through. Jill has her name uh, twice. Probably. Yeah. On the credits. <laughs> 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 Which Jill? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> There's a Jill and Steve, so I'm assuming that one. Two five five. Wait. Aw, thank you, two five six. That's two five six. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a great show. Thank you, Steve Husband. Eight we'll bits. see you next week. Love you guys.